Hello, my name is Matt Gracie, and I'm an engineer on the professional services team at Security Onion Solutions. This video is about the dashboards feature in the Security Onion console. Dashboards is a new component that we added in version 2.3.130 of the Security Onion platform in order to provide a way for analysts to quickly generate visualizations of data. Much like Hunt, Dashboards uses the data that Security Onion has stored in Elasticsearch and is designed with an emphasis on speed and flexibility. I'm going to show you the basics of the Dashboards interface, including some built-in visualizations that come with the platform, and then show you how to take advantage of this in Hunt in order to better understand and interpret your data. Okay, let's get started. Begin by logging into the Security Onion console, or SOC, with the username and password established during installation. Once you've logged into the console, you'll see on the left-hand side here there's a Dashboards item that's been added to the menu. Click on Dashboards, that'll open up the dedicated interface for the Dashboards component. Dashboards looks a lot like Hunt. In the upper left corner, you'll see there's a query box that allows you to specify a query in Onion query language. In the upper right, there's a time selector to allow you to designate what time frame you would like to pull data from. Underneath options is the normal options for things like setting your time zone or auto refresh. You'll notice that unlike earlier versions of Security Onion, from .130 forward, you can now designate multiple group by clauses for a query in Onion query language. For example, this default overview dashboard starts with a star, that is, give us all the data, and then the first group by clause is group by dash Sankey. So I'm making a Sankey diagram about it. We'll return to that in a moment. Using event.dataset and event.category. Then there's a pipe and another group by clause. Group by dash pi, make a pie chart, event.category. Then a pipe and another group by. Group by dash bar for bar chart, event.module, and so on. Essentially, what we're saying is make this query, that is the star query, get us everything, and then use these multiple group by clauses to create multiple tables or visualizations with the data that comes back. So this is all just different representations of the data coming back from the same query. If I wanted to change the query, I could do something like change that star to 8.8.8.8 would run the query again and update all of my visualizations and all of my tables at once. You'll see there are multiple default dashboards built in. Uh, this overview one is the one that we're looking at right now, but there's also dashboards for things like alerting, for WASA data, for Sysmon data, for Strelka, that is file analysis data, for the various categories of Zeek data, and so on. So it would probably behoove you to take a look at these defaults, examine the default dashboards for any data that you are importing into your Security Onion instance, see what looks useful for you as an analysis or a threat hunting tool. Going back to the overview here, we'll see that we have three different visualizations on the screen by default. Uh, first, we have a Sankey diagram here for event data set and event category. What a Sankey diagram does is it shows us a many-to-many -many relationship between data points. And the thickness of the line indicates how many connections there are. So for example, if we mouse over here, we'll see that we have 28,369 items that are in the connection event data set, which is part of the network event category. A close second is DNS. We have 23,960 DNS events, uh, which are also part of the event category. However, we have significantly fewer file events, only 534 of those. Still part of the network category, but it's a much smaller number, so you can see it's a much narrower line. If we want to turn this from a Sankey back into a table, we can do that by clicking on this table icon here. It'll refresh the dashboard and we'll have our normal textual table output. If we wanted to change it back into a Sankey, we can just click on the Sankey diagram button here, and it will turn it right back. One thing to note about Sankey diagrams is that that option will only exist if you have multiple items in the group by. Again, because we're showing a many-to-many -many relationship, you need to have more than one category of data in order to generate a Sankey diagram. 
For a pie chart, like we see here for event category, what this does is it takes the results of the query and breaks them down into percentages and displays that visually. So in this case, we are looking at our event categories, which are network, host, database, and host process. Uh, you can see that the vast majority of the stuff from the last 24 hours is network data. But in our pie charts, if we want to take something out, we can just click on it on the legend and it will reformat the pie chart accordingly. So now with network out of the picture, the vast majority of our data is host data. If we want to eliminate that as well, we'll see that we have a fair amount of database data and a little bit of host process data. This is a good tool for uh, quickly adjusting the visualization to remove uh, common or expected results. Say, for example, you're looking at uh, ports on which HTTP traffic is being passed, and you want to remove 80 so that you can focus on the anomalous ones, the, uh, the non-standard ports. This would be a quick way to do that in a visualization. And finally, a bar chart is just a standard bar chart. It shows the quantity of the various items. In this case, we have uh, 53,717 Zeke logs as, composed, as compared to 34,000 OSEC logs, and then everything else is much further down the line. Again, if we wanted to change this back into a table, we can do that by clicking the table icon. If instead we wanted to view this as a pie chart, we can click on the pie chart icon and it will do that instead. Now, if you want to add a visualization to this dashboard, say for example, you want to visualize the agent type, you can click on the agent type just like we did in Hunt traditionally. You can either click on group by, which will add it to our most recent group by at the end of the query, or we can click on new group by, which will create a new table. Let's click on new group by. We'll see here we have a table for agent type. Uh, we have 2000 file beat items and 233 win log beat items. And then we can change that into a pie chart if we like, or we can change it into a bar chart Again, because we don't have multiple items here, we can't turn it into a Sankey. We would have to add something additional, like say, uh, agent name. We click group by, that will add it to the most recent group by. Now we have this all in one table, agent type and agent name. Click on the Sankey, and we have a pretty direct relationship. Looks like SO Manager is using FileBeat, while our Win2012 web server is using WinLogBeat would be expected. If we want to remove one of these panels from our dashboard, we can just click on a little trash can icon and it'll remove the group by from the onion query language query up above and uh, then also remove the table or visualization here in the group metrics area. Two more things that I want to note about dashboards. One is that all the information about how to build the dashboard is actually encoded in the URL. So if you want to create a dashboard and then bookmark it in your browser, that's very easy to do. As long as you're logged into SOC, that bookmark will bring you back to the exact dashboard that you built. It also makes it very easy to share these dashboards with the other members of your team or put them in a central location. Also, if you need more visibility on one of these visualizations, in 2.3.140, we added the ability to zoom in and maximize the view. So if you want to see the Sankey in full size, you can do that. Uh, this is really good for visualizations like Sankey's that tend to get a little bit busy, so it's easier to see them if they're blown up. And then all you have to do is hit the escape key to return to the normal visualization view. All right, so now that we've looked at the basics of dashboards and how these components work together, let's take a look at how it's integrated into Hunt and how we can use it as part of an investigation. For this hunt, we have a very simple demo environment set up with a Windows 2012 server with Sysmon installed that is using WinLogBeat to forward its logs into our Security Onion instance. If you're interested in setting something like this up in your own environment or your own demo lab, we have another video on our YouTube channel all about how to install and configure Sysmon and WinLogBeat to gather this sort of information. Our hunting hypothesis here is we want to find a user running mspaint.exe. We're going to use that as a stand-in for some sort of malicious software. 
and we want to get more insight into what else that user is doing on that machine in our environment. So uh, we will start by hunting for mspaint.exe. This will hunt for that string across all of the logs in our security onion backend. And we see we have one hit. We have a sysmon event, a process creation event for mspaint.exe. We open that up. Uh, we'll see that, yes, this is a process creation event. It is on a server named win2012web. We have all of the metadata about it here, the command line and so on. And we also have the username. So in this case, the username is win2012web slash administrator. We'll click on that and include it in our query. So what that will do is it will update our query here to say, okay, anything from this Win2012 web administrator I want to see. Now we open the event back up and we want to get a look at what else this user is up to. So we will say, uh, I want a the process parent ID, that is what is the PID of the process that launched this process. We'll add that as a group by. I want the parent executable. So process parent executable, we will add that as a group by. And remember our differentiation here. If you add it to group by, it adds it to the same panel, the same uh, visualization or table as opposed to new group by adds it to a new one. And I want the uh, process executable as well. So we'll add that to our group by. Now, I don't need uh, these event module and event data set items anymore because anything that has a process parent PID, a process parent executable, is going to be a process creation event. And I don't need this mspaint.exe anymore. I can get rid of that because I want to see all the processes that were launched by this user. So we see here we've got a process PID, a parent executable, a process executable. But this is all in chart form. It's a little harder to read. Now that we have this dashboards functionality and it's integrated into Hunt, I can just click on the Sankey diagram here and it will build me a nice diagram of all the stuff that this user has been up to. So I see I've got a whole bunch of net commands, which seems pretty suspicious. I have a bunch of stuff coming off of this PowerShell process. And then I have a couple other smaller ones. I have uh, some Firefox stuff. And here is that MS Paint executable that I initially found. Looks like it was launched from PowerShell. All as part of this 836 session here. If I want some more visibility into what these net commands are doing, I can come down here, open up one of the events, and instead of just the process executable, I can add the process command line as well. So I can add that to my group by, and you'll see up here my Sankey diagram has been updated. I now have the process parent ID and parent executable grouping everything together and then the process executable itself, and then the process command line. This is sort of hard to read, so I'm going to zoom into it using our maximize function here. And you'll see I now can tell that all of these net events were things like net add user, net list administrators, net add this new user, net add this user to administrators, and so on. So this appears to be uh, some sort of system administration uh, activity going on here. I may want to review this machine, see if these changes were authorized, see what's going on. But that's how easy it is to start with, is anyone on my network running this executable? And then build this sort of process tree with data that you've gathered from Sysmon using Security Admin. Uh, these visualizations can really help speed up your hunting uh, because when you're looking at it like this, it's obvious which processes have parents in common and which stuff you really need to winnow in on for your investigation.
So thank you very much for your time. I hope you found this demonstration of our new dashboards functionality useful. If you want more information about this or anything else in Security Onion, you can always check out our documentation. That's at securityonion.net slash docs. If you're interested in our training offerings, we have online as well as in-person training. More information for that is at securityonion.net slash training. And if you have any comments or questions or feedback, please feel free to start a new thread on the Security Onion discussion board at securityonion.net slash discuss. Thanks very much. Have a great day.